one <clears throat> essentially is a belt driven turbo at the RPM of the engine, which in turn is going to spin this a lot faster. If you stick around to the end, I'm going to tell you a story about one of you guys that I met that watches the videos that meant a lot to me. So I just want to let you know that this, there it's the end. We have a lot of fun with the supercharger, first reactions and all that, but I encourage you to check that out. All right, first drive. With oh. There's not many cars that you can throw a pretty aggressive supercharger at and make a bunch of horsepower without having to build a motor or any major supporting mods. This is muscle car related and I did learn that things get pricey pretty quick regardless. So I'm not saying this is cheap, but I'm not saying it's as expensive as building a high horsepower Subaru, that's for sure. Through some friends, I found out about this supercharger kit that came out for the Mustang platform recently from a company local here in Phoenix, Chandler specifically, ESS tuning. They have this really cool centrifugal supercharger setup that's really, really simple, easy to wrap your head around, and I like everything that it has to offer, and it's the characteristics that I'm looking for. There's a couple different superchargers out there. You can get a root style supercharger where it's an intake manifold on top, forces air directly in, you build a lot of torque. Centrifugal supercharger is basically a belt-driven turbo, and Brevin here in a sec I'm gonna introduce you to is gonna walk us through what they have to offer and kind of the differences between those two and let you see them up close in person. And then you have turbocharger setups. So you kind of have those three options, belt driven turbo, which is a centrifugal supercharger setup, root style, and then turbocharger. This gets confused a lot with Pro Charger. Pro Charger is a brand that makes centrifugal superchargers. So this is technically a supercharger. A Pro Charger is just a brand, remember that. I made a video a long time ago asking people if they liked superchargers, turbos, or pro chargers more. I didn't know what I was talking about. Pro charger is what I just explained. Not, It's not its own thing. You live and learn. Jumping over to ESS tuning with our friend Brevin. Brevin actually installs a little supercharger kit for me in this video. We get the first reaction, all that. But we filmed the traditional install video for ESS's website. So Brevin did all this for us and we're able to film it and walk you through all of it. So it worked out perfectly. Here's Brevin. This is a Whipple supercharger, uh, also known as a root style blower. Uh, we use Whipple and we also use a centrifugal supercharger. Mainly the difference between the two, one <clears throat> essentially is a belt driven turbo. Uh, so what that is, is we have an impeller, sort of like on a, on a turbo. Instead of having an exhaust housing and an exhaust side, we have a pulley that goes here. So we put our pulley on this shaft, it has a keyway and a bolt. Then this gets put into your drive system on your, on your car, essentially like it spins the alternator and the water pump and everything. And that will spin with your belt, which in turn spins the impeller and creates boost. How do you talk about like a, like a quarter turn on this is almost like a half turn on that? Right, yes, there's an internal step. Uh, there's a gear ratio on the inside, I'll show you here. On the inside we have it, mainly just consists of two gears. We have the pulley side and we have the impeller side. So we have that gear, which is your pulley, where your pulley bolts on. This is aircraft grade steel, what did you call it? Yeah, so it's super hardened. Uh, it is actually cut by the same company that cuts the gears for uh, Boeing, for their airplanes. So we have this as your pulley, this is your impeller where this bolts on right there. So we have those and they mesh together. And so this spins. And so this is going to spin at the RPM of the engine, which in turn is going to spin this a lot faster. We offer four sizes as of right now. Um, we start off depending on your, your car, your boost level, your goals with the car. We have our G1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, smallest to biggest? Smallest to biggest, one through four. Um, basically what changes, this is the only one that actually has a completely different case. As you can see, this one is much smaller. Uh, the black part, the casing. Um, same idea though, same gear set essentially. Basically this is what's used on our most of our kits for our BMWs. Um, 
we go up to two, three, and four mostly for our uh, either the BMWs that have a built motor or want to make a lot more power or for our domestic cars, our Corvettes, our Mustangs, um, that kind of stuff that can make a lot more power, have a bigger V8 motor that need more boost. So uh, in your Mustang kit, this is what we got here. This is our G2 supercharger. The difference you'll see here too is these impellers are obviously look different than these. These are billet impellers, which means they are uh, CNC'd out of a solid block of aluminum. Um, they start out as a big square and then you have the CNC machine go in and then cut this out in one pass. Uh, these are actually cast impeller. Um, it's a high pressure casting. Still very high quality, but at the end of the day, these ones will allow a little bit more flex, uh, whereas these ones are a little bit more rigid and it can be more brittle at high RPMs. Now they're not going to break on you, but uh, with the end of the day, if you're trying to make a thousand horsepower plus, normally you'll want one of these billet ones. They're a little bit more sturdy uh, at that kind of power level. Now that you know what the main component looks like, the whole supercharger complete looks like this. Basically, a massive looking turbo, but the belt side is way smaller. To give you an idea of what this kit looks like installed, here's their shop GT350. Headed home with the kit, we're going to need three things, a tuning device, injectors, and spark plugs. I'm going pretty conservative, one of the bigger pulleys, so these LU47 Ford Performance injectors found in the GT350 will be a bottom line minimum that you need to run this kit. We're only running about 6 pounds of boost, so this will do. The tuning device I have is the N gauge, they're getting phased out and most people are going with SCT tuning devices. Check with your tuner and see what they prefer. At the very beginning, I recommend installing NGK 6510s. I would talk to your tuner for this as well, make sure they don't have another preference, and see what spark gap they're wanting. Bill at Arizona Elite Motorsports had me do a .028 spark plug gap. Ready for a heavy install I know you'll learn a lot this is a lot to do but for installing a supercharger you really can't ask for anything more simple we're gonna start with the injectors move the heater hoses out of the way there's insulation on top of the fuel rails where the injectors are sitting be careful when you remove those I ended up tearing one I'm gonna put it back it'll be fine but just avoid that if you can remove the fuel hose fuel line from the fuel rail get a towel to catch that disconnect all of the fuel injectors all of the plugs be careful those are can be brittle depending on how old your car is then you will be able to get access to the bolts and then remove the fuel rail from the whole system there are four eight or ten millimeter bolts can't remember all of the injectors have these clips on them that keep them at a specific angle so that all the wiring for all of the injectors is simple. When you install these injectors, you're gonna have some grease and you're gonna wanna put these grease on the O-ring so that nothing tears and everything seals well. Put those clips back on and you're good. Put some grease on the tip of all of the injectors that's gonna be inserted into the intake manifold and you're good to go. Make sure you repeat that all eight times and then we're gonna go ahead and slide our fuel rail back into place, put all of our bolts back, put our heater hoses back, all the clips, insulation, etc., and you're good to go. Pull the front bumper off and remove the stock intake. Remove the hose from the intake sound tube 
and install the included plug. Remove the OEM thermostat housing and replace it with the ESS 90 degree thermostat housing. Pull up on the tensioner bolt to remove the belt. Remove the lower coolant hose and replace it with the ESS silicone hose to make space for the charge pipe and use the included hose clamps. Remove the upper alternator nut and two timing case cover bolts. Install the threaded spacer onto the upper alternator bolt and tighten it down. Prepare the base bracket and leave the spacer bolt loose. Install the bracket using the two timing case cover mounts. Tighten the Allen head bolts. Prepare and install the main bracket with a small spacer in the upper thermostat bolt location. The curved part of the spacer should be installed facing the thermostat housing. The lower mount will thread into the alternator spacer. Remove the factory crash bar and the attached wiring loom. Air ducts on both sides will be removed to make space for the charge pipes. Prepare the intercooler by installing the tile blow-off valve. Loosely install the banjo fitting with the supplied crush washers. Install the blow-off valve using the supplied brown o-ring and v-band clamp. Please use care when installing and make sure not to pinch the o-ring and rotate the v-band clamp opening 180 degrees of the mounting bolts on the intercooler. Attach the intercooler mounting brackets using the supplied allen bolts. The blow-off valve mounts to the driver's side of the intercooler. Mount the intercooler to the OEM bumper support mounting points using the 13 millimeter hardware. Before you tighten it down, make sure to visually center the intercooler. Slide the driver and passenger side charge pipes into place and tighten them down with the included hose clamps. Remove the factory mass airflow sensor from the stock intake. With the included hardware, reinstall the mass airflow sensor into the new housing. Be extremely careful with your mass airflow sensor and handle it with care. Once the mass airflow sensor is installed in the housing, identify which side the pocket is on. That pocket should be facing the passenger side fender. Connect your mass airflow sensor using the provided extension harness. Install the final charge pipe. Using some silicone, it might help things slide into place better and use the appropriate hose clamp to attach it to the throttle body. Install the new belt, start at the crankshaft and work your way up to the supercharger pulley. The image on screen shows you the exact belt routing. Slide the supercharger into position. Slide your pulley onto the supercharger Push your keyway into place, put some red Loctite on the bolt included in the kit, and tighten it down. Depending on what year your Mustang is, use the included plug and PCV fitting in your intake pipe. Attach the K&N filter and the supplied hose clamp.
If you have a catch can, this will not be necessary, but if you do not, use the supplied 5 8 hose and remove the factory quick connect PCV fitting, connecting the PCV fitting to the hose and routing it from the driver's side to the black connector on the intake. Find a constant vacuum source and tie it into the supplied T fitting and routing the newly introduced vacuum line to the blow off valve. Included in the kit is detailed instructions on how to fill and empty. The supercharger is super simple. There's two bolts on each side, one to fill, one to pull fluid out, and one side has a dipstick. It's pretty cool. Top off the coolant, load your base map file from your tuner. The vehicle should be ready to start. people out there that really care it's 106 degrees outside and in, it's making between 540 and 570 we're gonna take it out one of these nights when it's like 60 degrees or lower here soon it's probably gonna drive real rowdy
This car made 576 horsepower and about 460 foot-pounds of torque. This doesn't make a ton of torque, but you keep that drivability, you have all your horsepower at the top, you don't break the tires too loose with a normal street tire setup, but you can still make a lot of power and have a lot of fun because this is a very high revving motor. If you're wanting to go all out, you should probably go route style setup supercharger, but if you're someone like me who wants to go drive in the canyon, drive on the streets, have something fun, but still you can play with, but that also doesn't want to kill you off of every light, then this is for you. Luckily a big cruise came up in the Phoenix Valley and I went with my cousin and I quickly found out that the clutch was slipping all over the place at high speeds and freeway speeds. A little bit of a bummer, I still went, I still had a good time, but this is a learning lesson for me. Um, I knew the stock clutch would be borderline holding and it held around town, but when I got on the freeway and would put it in like fourth gear and get on it really hard and it would boost up, it would start to slip and you could hear, you could feel it. And it, didn't, it was putting power down, but not like it should. And so we will be transitioning into installing a new clutch soon. If you're new here, the brand Karma Speed is all about building confidence in the garage. So, the, so what we're doing here, learning every single sports car model that we can, having a good time. And this interaction that I had with one of you guys that watches the videos is the core of what this has turned into and why I do this, where I get my drive from, where my energy comes from, why I wake up and work and get stuff done. And um, basically, I had a place with my girlfriend eating, I had a homie approach me and say, hey, your cam, right? I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, hey man, uh, you know, do you see that Focus ST? I said, yeah. He goes, man, I, I would have never turned a wrench in my life, but because of your videos and able to walk me through it, I did everything to it. And I was able to go check it out outside. That's just the short, long story short, that's what this is all about. That's where I get my energy from. And all the conversations with you guys, not, it's fun for me, trust me. Like, But doing stuff by yourself, for yourself, just for your own sake is only fun for so long. And then it just becomes a dead end road where if you haven't experienced yet, when you just focus on yourself for long enough, it leads to an empty place like money, you know, all those things. It all leads to an empty place. It's all about investing in others and um, being there for other people. And so that interaction and those type of things like happens regularly, thankfully, because I've worked and created this system. So. I just wanted to put that out there, not to pat me on the back or anything like that, but just so you guys understand, have a clear understanding of what this is all about so that if you know someone that needs help, you can go help them or simply send them a video or you see a co is something online, say, hey, I don't know this or whatever. Try and find, even not just mine, try and find videos to help people and try and be there for people in person because this just allows me to reach a lot of people at once. And so on a community level, I want the Karma Speed community to represent the people who are out there helping people pick up a wrench for the first time on a peer-to-peer, face-to-face -to -face level. So that's all I wanted to touch on. I don't want to go super into detail on interactions like that. It's nothing that we need to talk about, but I just want you to know that that's there and that means a lot to me and it's super duper humbling and I appreciate all of you guys so much. So other than that, if you're new here, we're all about building confidence in the garage, Karma Speed brand. That's a big, huge hurdle for me. 2021 is growing that this year. So I have some hoodies in the works, t-shirts, more hats and things like that. I have some things coming to the website that are gonna benefit you outside of just having gear that I'm excited on. So if you can follow Karma Speed on Instagram, that's where I'll be posting all the updates. So that's all I'm asking you guys to do. Follow Karma Speed on Instagram. If you wanna see more content, you can follow myself. That's it. I'm gonna help you guys have all the resources you need with Karma Speed brand, not just the gear, but more stuff. It's gonna be on the website soon. So I appreciate you guys so much and hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for the story time and being here this late. If you are, it means a lot and I appreciate you. If you haven't reached out to me and said, what's up on Instagram, please DM my um, personal Instagram. I respond to every single one of you guys. It takes some time, uh, sometimes a lot of time. I'm super busy, I'm trying to move super fast, but I do try and touch every single one of you guys, so please reach out, I love to meet you, say what's up, please send me a video. I love sending you guys a video message back, and uh, yeah, other than that, have a great one, thanks for stopping by. See you in the next video.